Hello and welcome to azuremonk.com. This is Azure Managed Identities explained in plain English. We'll cover system assigned managed identities, user assigned managed identities, the difference between them, and a step-by-step -step demo on how to configure it in less than 5 minutes. Let's assume we have a fictional company which hosted super secretive customer data on Azure. They were leveraging Azure SQL database on Azure and the application code was running from an application server which was hosted on an Azure VM. The database like we all know needed connection strings and other secrets to authenticate which were shared with the application developers who embedded the secrets either in the application config or the code itself both of which did not really go well with the security team this was top secret data and they wanted a way to securely store the keys so the next option that was proposed was to move the secrets off from the code in the application server to the azure key vault this was a significant step in the right direction and provided great security advantages the security team although was still not very convinced because the application still needed a way to authenticate to the azure key vault in order to retrieve the keys and this authentication meant that there was still some configuration information relating to the secret on the application server they wondered if there was a better way to do this as in there was zero secrets or credentials stored anywhere in the code well the answer is yes we can accomplish this using azure managed identities azure managed identities comes in two flavors system assigned managed identities and a user assigned managed identities we'll first talk about system assigned azure managed identities system assigned azure managed identities provides a mechanism for the service in this case the azure vm to have an identity instead of the end user in azure active directory once this identity is created in azure active directory you can now use this to grant access to the target resources which support azure ad authentication in this case azure sql database you can now authorize this identity and grant permissions based on the level of access you want to grant it if this sounds a lot like service principles that's because it is a service principle but this is a special type of service principle which provides you with the following advantages number 1 you don't have to worry about the expiry of the service principles the credential rotation is automatically taken care of for you the second advantage is that it provides better identity life cycle management what we mean by that is when you're done using a virtual machine with a system assigned managed identity and delete the vm the identity associated automatically with it also gets deleted now if the code is run from the azure vm which has the system assigned managed identity enabled you don't need to store the credentials or secret anywhere on the code the authentication happens automatically via the virtual machine let's quickly jump to the azure portal and see how we can enable this step number 1 we click on the vm and then choose identity and enable system assigned managed identity well that's it now you have an identity for the vm or the azure resource step number 2 is we go to the target resource that is azure sql database in this case and grant the vm assigned identity access on this azure sql database and then click on okay it's as simple as that the team is super happy and also the company started growing in business which means more virtual machines were provisioned to handle all the extra user load this also meant that there were number of managed identities created for each of the vms that were spun up and this was getting slightly harder to manage we talked about the first type that is system assigned managed identity earlier where each identity is tightly coupled to the azure resource in this case the azure vm however if we have a scenario where we have multiple vms all sharing the same target resource we would want to use the user assigned managed identity what this does is it creates an identity independent of the life cycle of the azure resource and as in when new azure resources are spun up for the application we just assign the identity to the new resource that gets created let's quickly jump to the portal to see how we get this configured unlike system assigned managed identities user assigned managed identities are created independent of the resource 
So we'll search for manage identities and then click on add. We'll create a user identity called my user identity. Now that the identity is created, we'll go back to the new VM that was created. We click on the identity and this time we will choose user assigned managed identity and we'll choose the user assigned managed identity that we just created. Remember, we have only assigned identity to an Azure resource. We still need to grant access to the identity. So let's jump back to the Azure SQL database. We click on identity and access management and grant the newly created user assigned managed identity access on the Azure SQL database. So to summarize, the difference between system assigned and user assigned are you create a system assigned managed identity as part of the Azure resource. Whereas with user assigned managed identity, you create this independently. With system assigned identity, you don't need to worry about the identity lifecycle management. Whereas with user assigned management, you are responsible for the lifecycle management. With system assigned managed identities, it cannot be shared across multiple resources because it's tightly coupled to the Azure resource. Whereas with the user assigned managed identity, you can't share that. This was great. But like we saw earlier, Azure Managed Identities works with any target resource which support Azure AD authentication. But let's say if the target resource does not support Azure AD authentication, you could always place the keys or secret inside an Azure Key Vault and assign the managed identity for the VM or the Azure resource onto the Azure Key Vault. That way, you can still authenticate and fetch a key which is which does not support Azure AD authentication leveraging Azure Key Vault. Everyone's happy. The possibilities are endless with managed identity. It provides a safe and secure way to manage identities and secrets inside of your organization. Here is a list of services that support managed identities as of today, including functions and app services and even Kubernetes pod identities. The target resource where you can authorize Azure managed identity remains any resource which support Azure AD authentication. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.